first. Let me tell you whom you have condemned. Not me, begotten of a shepherd swain, but issued from the progeny of kings, virtuous and holy, chosen from above by inspiration of celestial grace to work exceeding miracles on earth. The liberator, Joan of Arc, known as Joan the Maid, or in French, Yehan la Pucelle. The church, the government, and the army once betrayed and burnt Joan of Arc as a heretic. She is now honored by them as the symbol of French patriotism. Joan was born in Domremy in 1412 or 1413. In this small community, Joan's father, Jacques d'Arc, was an important man, one of the leading men in the village. At the trial which took place 20 years after her death, Joan's friends and neighbors were asked to testify to her character. When I was 13 years old, I had a voice from God to help me govern my conduct. And the first time I was very fearful. And came this voice about the hour of noon in the summertime in my father's garden. The voice told me that I should go to France and I could not bear to stay where I was. The voice told me I should raise the siege laid to the city of Orléans. The voice told me also that I should make my way to Robert de Baudricourt in the fortress of Vaucouleurs, the captain of the place, that he would give me people to go with me. And me, I answered it, that I was a poor girl who knew not how to ride or lead in war one can't explain away her voices and her visions. These are her personal affair. One could argue, I suppose, that in a period which believed in visions and voices, people were more likely to have them in a period when people perhaps don't. But um, I think the use which is made of Joan can be explained. She could be seen as the instrument of a partic particular political faction at court, like the House of Anjou. On April the 29th, 1429, Joan entered the city by a gap in the overstretched English lines. By her presence, she galvanized the defending forces into making a series of successful attacks, vividly depicted in the Armagnac Chronicles. Joan, exalted by the victory that her voices had promised, was anxious to achieve her next objective. She comes over as a very intelligent girl, the shrewdness and sharpness of her replies shows that. Uh, with a good memory, she's able to recall uh, episodes and moments of the trial, for instance, that happened a few days before, and even correct some of the scribes. Uh, rather impulsive at times, strong-willed, uh, cutting through humbug and uh, going direct to the point. Oh, how blessed is the female sex. How favoured of God, that one of us should appear when this mighty nation was humbled and do what no man could achieve. The people rescued safe and sound by a woman and the traitors put to flight before they scarcely had time to know what had happened to them. That a mere slip of a girl, quite extraordinary, isn't it? I think that one would have to acknowledge that um, the great psychological boost which she gives to the Valois monarchy by having Charles VII crowned at Reims um, could hardly be overrated. The Hundred Years' War could never be the same, and the political history of France could never be the same after that event. But the sequence which followed the coronation was not, of course, what Joan predicted. From that year onwards, the popular celebrations which had taken place at Orléans every year in honour of Joan now took place with the official blessing of the Catholic Church. And so Joan began her long career as an officially approved popular heroine. 